What's up, guys? Iceman here. Welcome to the Diablo Research Institution. Appreciate you guys coming by. Like this damn video, if you will. Subscribe to the page. And swat that bell so you're notified next time I post a video. And blessings to my patrons. May you have many wives. Links in the description below. <laughs> it's been a while, huh? Yeah. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> I remember when I was just a little duck-billed platypus. Alright. The year was... 1997. One of my dogs who... Hmm. I don't want to say it. He lived only with his mother. Alright. His dad was out of the picture for quite a while. So he didn't have too much supervision. And he had this computer. I remember the first time I saw Diablo 1 come to life on the screen. I've never even heard of the game before. And in these days I was playing Nintendo 64. All right. What was I playing on computer? Maybe Timon and Pumbaa or something? I, I don't remember, but... I saw Diablo, and I saw him going through the dungeon, collecting the goodies, and just how immersive it was. I saw him open up his inventory, and it was unlike any other game that I've seen at that time. Where there wasn't just like a sword, right, that your character had, just like one sword. No, but there was all sorts of shit that could fall. Swords of various types. Magic swords. Uh, unique swords. Yeah. Axes. Bows. There's an archer. The rogue, basically, from Diablo 2. And in those days, she was a female. This was pre-D2R days. All right. Just a side note. Yeah. And I remember him talking to the guys who were playing... And he even formed a group. And I, I saw this happen before my eyes. I was in awe and wonder watching this game come alive. There was a sorcerer, a rogue, and my dog who was playing a warrior. All right. He had some two handed axe. And there was the rogue and the sorcerer casting spells. And I was like, are you kidding me? Look at this game. Uh, wow. We were kind of experiencing it for the first time. We didn't look up all the items. We didn't look at any builds. I mean, that shit didn't even exist back then, all right? There probably was a website that you could go to to look at, like, some of the items and maybe some builds that a couple guys made, but there wasn't, it wasn't like it is today. Which is why I make the point often to take it as though you're blind, the journey. Like Diablo 4, I am going to be playing Diablo 4, Season 5, on my other channel, my Diablo 4 channel. Check that out. Check out my Meditations channel as well. Linked in the description of this video. But in those days, man, do you guys remember that? Yeah, and he was like in the catacombs, and then he made his way down to the cave with these guys. And from that moment on, I knew that I had to get this game. So I went to a game store probably the next week. Rolled the dial -a bus out there. And hell yeah. I picked up Diablo 1. And that was amazing. And then, of course, Diablo 2 came out. This time, the third. But where are we at today? 
So now we have Diablo 2 resurrected. Now, the research institution was by design. I'm the one who designed it. The Diablo 2 research institution and the Diablo 4 research institution. But the Diablo 2 research institution was designed to go on forever. There are just too many variables. You know what I mean? All sorts of shit to test, to break through, to defeat stereotypes and shit like that. Yeah. It was designed to go on forever on this channel. Wow, we have a long way to go, dogs. The Ascension. And it's continually going up. All right. Breaking on through the challenges, the barriers. It's endless. For as long as Ice Boy's around anyway. Before this ice melts, if you will. But it's more than just an institution. It's something I need you guys to realize. About this entity of a sort. It's a spiritual journey. Now, with that being said, what the hell needs to be added to this? I mean, how long, how many years has, has this game been out? Diablo 2 Resurrected? What the fuck's going on here? Why is it that we have the mods like Project Diablo 2, Path of Diablo, and they're actually listening to the fans and giving us some of the things that we want and ask for? You know what I mean? Like, these people actually play the game. We have a big inventory. A charm specific section in the inventory. So you can always find shit and put it in your inventory. Because it's a Diablo game. You shouldn't be able to do that. The charm shouldn't take up the whole damn thing. And I don't want to put shit in the cube, okay? End game content. Some maps. Now, not two end game. Not like the rifts in Diablo 3 that funnels you up to one damn build. No. End game content like the maps where it's just higher density of a bunch of 85 monsters. Wait, they have the Corrupted Zones, don't they? The Terror Zones, is that what they're called? I don't like the Terror Zones, but I mean, that's fine. That, that's, that's aside from the point. Okay, fine. The Terror Zones are okay. But, we need more. Bigger inventory. Bigger stash. Stackable runes. Stackable gems. Where the hell are these things? Are they ever going to add them? Do you guys have any idea? We gotta send this damn video to Blizzard. Give me a hell yeah in the comments below if you want Professor Icedak to be a part of the team at Blizzard to make some of these executive as fuck decisions. Alright, because I will make this a good game. I mean, I don't want to do the work myself. What I'll probably do is I'm going to hit up some of you guys on Discord who are more interested in this shit. And uh, I'll outsource it. But not like overseas or anything. I'll just, out, I'll, I'll just outsource it to my homies. Alright. And we're going to get some shit done. But I mean, I don't know if this is going to happen. But nonetheless, I'm curious. What do you guys have to say? What does Diablo 2 Resurrected need right now? Are they done adding to it? Really? I mean, maybe now that Diablo 4 has kind of hit a lull or whatever. I wonder if, if that stabilizes in whatever way they see fit. If they'll decide to eventually add some stuff to D2R. But aside from that. I've been thinking about playing some Path of Exile too. Have you guys seen the videos on that? Holy shit. Oh, 
holy blasted toad. Game looks awesome. I didn't really like the first one <clears throat> with how the characters run all upright. You know what I mean? Like they just, they, it doesn't, it's not, it's not that immersive, but the second one, it's more fluent. I mean, it's not like the rogue in Diablo 4 where she's like the hunchback of Notre Dame and shit, you know? No, it's like, uh, it's, it's more believable. It's like they're fluent. It's like, it's like they, they know how to run. It's like their backs, you know, in pretty good shape. So it's just, it's a bit more immersive. I know it's a minor detail, but the way that they run in Path of Exile 1 bothers me. But I think that they fixed it in PoE 2. Another interesting thing about it is it seems like they're actually okay with having attractive women. Like, if we're going to stare at a character all damn day, don't we want them to be visually appealing? You know what I'm saying? Does everybody have to be ugly as fuck? Let me know in the comments below. But those are just surface level things. More importantly, the depth, the game pace, the skills, the animation, the customization, all that stuff looks pretty good in PoE 2 thus far. And they're saying it's going to be not as fast-paced endgame as what PoE 1 is. Where PoE 1, you're just blasting away, the screen is just constantly exploding endgame, you know? They're saying they're going to try to keep it where it's more of like a game, where you're like swinging your weapon and killing shit, you know what I mean? Or, or casting spells and killing, making methodical decisions in battle. You know what I mean? It's not just boom, 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 just all the time. And I think they're going to make it a bit more user-friendly. I mean, it is oriented toward controllers, which at first glance, I don't like. But after watching it, you could make these characters run backwards. You know how in Diablo, you can't make them run backwards. You just click the mouse and they just turn and run and they turn and run. But with PoE 2, you can like use the joystick and make them run backwards. And then you can blast while running backwards and sideways. You can strafe and shit with the joystick. Like it's actually a pretty good mechanic. I wonder if I'm going to be using a controller to play PoE 2. Hell yeah. But I think I will post those spiritual journeys on this channel. But I'm curious what you guys have to say about that. I was never too much of a gamer. I can't get into that modern shit either. I mean, it all seems the same, isn't it? Modern shit gaming. It's all the same trailers, all the same. They got like these big set pieces. It's like some Hollywood CGI movie is what it feels like. It doesn't feel organic. You know what I mean? It just feels like it's all designed where you go here, this big event happens. You go here, this big event happens. They just don't have the same feel anymore, do they? As mentioned, I played Diablo 1. I played Zelda Ocarina of Time. I mean, I played Genesis. I played Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I played Jurassic Park. For Sega Genesis, Jurassic Park Rampage Edition for Sega Genesis, The Lost World for Sega Genesis, and then the N64 era, I played GoldenEye 007, a lot of that. I don't want to skip anything, I had a Dreamcast as well, so I played the Sonic Adventure for that, I beat it, I played Resident Evil, Code Veronica was the first Resident Evil game that I played all the way through and beat for Sega Dreamcast. And then I played Resident Evil 2 for Nintendo 64 when they ported it to that, and it was awesome. And I beat that. Then I got a GameCube. I played Resident Evil 1. I beat that. Am I missing anything here? I played Resident Evil 3 eventually on the regular PlayStation, and I beat that. I played Super Mario 64, beat that. As mentioned, is Zelda Ocarina of Time, one of my favorite games ever. I beat that. Couldn't really get into Majora's Mask. Couldn't really get into Twilight Princess. I think I was chasing pussy too much in those years. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck am I doing here? I gotta go, I gotta get out. <laughs> I mean, I don't really know what it was, but it, I mean, maybe that's when the modern gaming thing happened. There's just something magical about Ocarina of Time. Why the hell don't they remaster it? 
And I'm not talking about a little Game Boy Advance or whatever the hell you call it, and a DS, a little Game Boy DS 3D or some shit remaster. I'm not talking about that. I want to play it on a little screen. And yeah, I know I could port it to the big one, but it's optimized for some little shitty console. You know, I want one that's optimized for Nintendo Switch or whatever is next. A full remaster of Ocarina of Time. Perhaps even a remake, as long as they do it correctly. Then I played Skyrim. I can't forget the Halos. I played all the Halos. Halo 1, not all of them, but I played Halo 1. Halo 2, beat all the campaigns. Halo 3, beat the campaign. I didn't play ODST or whatnot. But then I know this is controversial, but I played Halo Reach, and I loved Halo Reach. Loved the armor lock, loved the jetpack, loved the sprint, loved the levels. It was Bungie's last Halo game. And they did a damn good job. I know a lot of folks say, oh, Halo 3 is better. I like Halo Reach. All right. I beat the campaign, this and that, the third, and I played the most of that multiplayer. And then there's basically Diablo 3. Played through that 800 some hours and took off. Diablo 2, of course, happened during all this time. I was always playing Diablo 2 since the beginning. Uh, since its release, I was playing Diablo 2. You're right there, puppy. You're right there, Wolfie. And that's about it. I played Skyrim, and I'm looking forward to uh, the next Skyrim, or whatever that is, Elder Scrolls VI. Right? Looking forward to that. But, I mean, it's probably going to be woke, right? They're probably going to mess it up. But, I mean, I guess we'll see. But uh, I'm going to be paying attention, and I will be playing that on this channel as well. But that's kind of where I'm at with gaming, you know? And what do you guys have to say about that? Are there, are there good games today? Are there, are, do they still make good games, or what do you play? Or is it primarily Diablo 2? And do you want to see some PoE 2 stuff on this channel? And maybe the next Skyrim or whatever the hell it is. Elder Scrolls Sisk. And what do you think should be done to D2R? Is it just going to be this way forever? With no additions? And do you want it to stay this way? I mean, come on, they at least got to let us stack the damn runes and the gems and give us a bigger stash and give us a bigger inventory. You know, at the least they got to do that. But what about the reamping of uniques, the balancing of some items, the balancing of some skills, making more things viable, summon druid, you know, all this other shit. I don't know, but let me know in the comments below your thoughts on these matters. Like this video, if you will. Blessings to my patrons. Links in the description below. And to those of you who are my patron, may your finance, may your contribution be brought back to you sevenfold. May the Creator bless you and keep you, and may you have many wives. We'll see you all tomorrow. Peace be with you.